Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Group Chat. As you know, each week we open up with a fun video to help you get to know us. I wanted to show you all how I take care of my mental health and prepare for success every single morning. Let's take a look. Hey, yes, that was Woo! so amazing. Go Key, go Key. A little sweet, a little spicy, but I'm all love. They call me sunshine in human form. <laughs> Beauty doesn't last, but swag is forever. Honey, I'm not dimming my life for anybody. The U.S. just inaugurated Joe Biden as the 46th president and Kamala Harris as the first Black and South Asian woman as VP. As we all know, their road to the White House was no easy road, but in the end, they prevailed. So I want to know, how do you push through when a goal you're pursuing gets hard? Like running for president. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm a big baby. I definitely rely a lot on like my mom for emotional support. I, mm -hmm. I have like my best friend. I vent to him, I complain to him all the time. Especially for me, like I was moving back in September and transitioning jobs. So that was my goal was to get an apartment within a week, find a place to live. So I just rely on everyone that's around me. And I kind of, yeah, I rely on my support group. I think having a, people that you can just like vent to and say whatever you want like crazy or not I mean not crazy crazy like go to jail crazy but like have someone that like listens to you like a sounding board like you need that because I mean sometimes when you say things out loud I think that that's part of it like listing out like hey like these are the things that are going to keep me on track of my goal like having an outline like that's the thing that'll keep you pushing and like going through it so for me like I got I gotta like let it out this is just how i am you know this is like my thing because there have been a lot of hard stuff that i've had to deal with within the past few years like grieving and all kind of other things and so for me it's about honoring the journey so like really taking the space where the space between my dream being manifesting or whatever i want for myself and the actual process to get there, I really try to enjoy that process as hard as it can be. Because it's like, sometimes it feels like it goes on forever, but I won't know the joy of the mountaintop if I don't know the valley. And so I like to really just focus in on what I can learn during that time. I also like to tell myself all things are possible. That's my favorite affirmation for myself because I have really huge dreams, like dreams that would scare the average person. And so I really try to just keep saying all things are possible. Affirmations are what's been getting me through. And I guess the last thing I would say is just like this whole idea of like what I'm trying to manifest for myself is going to be difficult. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't going to be difficult, then I wouldn't want it. And so I just really try to keep in mind, focusing on what I can control and knowing that God is faithful in my life. And so I ain't gonna ever be alone. You know, I got my loving community. I got y'all now. So it's always like thinking about what I have versus what I don't have. So that's really helped me throughout my life. You made me cry. For real. Was, those Big old baby. Oh, no, God. for real. Like I love, I love every single part about that. And that's the thing people got to realize, like you have, like that's part of the journey. Like there's some tough parts about it. And it's not all peachy creamy. It's not roses and sniffing mm -hmm. rainbows and not sniffing <laughs> rainbows, but sniffing roses and sea rainbows. <laughs> like you have to, you have to enjoy that journey. How else are you going to get to your goal? Like you have to go through stuff just to get there. And, and that's what makes you stronger. Like you have to appreciate that journey. So key, like that just made my day. Like it made my whole day. So thank you for sharing that. It made my heart warm and fuzzy and turn me into a bigger baby with a bigger heart. So thank you, Ki. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, Ki, I feel, I feel like I was gonna say that, but then you said it so much better. <laughs> like, <it's laughs> the journey and enjoying it, because I do think that is true. Like, for me, when I think about challenges that I've faced, like, being able to take a step back and being like, but this is part of it is really, mm -hmm 
instrumental for me Mm -hmm. because like nothing fun or worthwhile or like whatever it is that they say like happens if it's not hard Mm -hmm. and I also think something that works for me too that helps a lot is like just lowering the stakes like no matter how big the goal is or how important I think it is the truth of the matter is that like it is not the end all be all of my Mm -hmm. existence if you're not if you don't achieve a goal that just means that like you try again and like you just like do you, I think I think just like not being afraid of failure is something that maybe doesn't apply to all goals, but definitely helps me is like, I've just become a lot more, maybe the desensitized is the word, but just like used to failure. Like if that's just something that you just put yourself out there, see what sticks. And then like, that's like half the battle if that not like most yeah. of the parts of being challenged so I think like if anything that's a good sign like if you know that you're experiencing hardship to some level like that just means that you have faith in yourself and you have the guts to like do something and so I think at the end of the day like lowering the stakes and being like what's so bad about not getting this or if you don't achieve this goal who really cares seeing it kind of like in the grander scheme of things and kind of just experiencing and practicing gratefulness um Mm -hmm. like you said Well, first of all, thank you all for sharing. Some of what you shared is like stuff that I can't even articulate myself. And it's just like, it all serves as a reminder to me. So thank you. And I think the biggest point that that y'all have touched on that has resonated with me is just living it. Like, like being present even when it's hard, even when you're not where you want to be. Because right now I have so many ambitions and and like I'm constantly thinking of the future. I'm like, I want to do this and this and this and this and this. And right now I'm working to get to this specific point. And it's like, once I get there, I'm just going to want to get to the next point. What I've realized is that like getting to a certain point in life, like that on its own, isn't going to make you happy. Like that's not going to solve all your problems. It's not going to, like you said, Eric, like be the end all be all. Like just as when you fail, that won't be the end all be all. Like if you achieve it, that won't be the end all be all either. Like there's always more. And if you focus on chasing more and more and more, like you're probably never going to be, I'll never be satisfied. Y'all watch Hamilton. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But in terms of like, for me, when things get hard, I'm kind of like, I don't know, like when I work on or like when I work towards something, I kind of keep my head down because I feel like manifestation doesn't really work for me. Like if there's something that I really want and I'm like vocal about it, like it doesn't end up happening or like for like a really like small example, it's like, okay, I'm going to get this assignment done today or whatever. And I'm like posting it on my Finsta and I'm like texting my friends. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this assignment done. I'm going to finish this essay today. And then it doesn't end up happening. And like that's happened to me for like things on a little bit of a bigger scale too so like now I've kind of resorted to like keeping my head down and just getting shit done but I do rely on my support system very much and I rely on like comfort media like my comfort music my comfort movies my comfort tv shows not a bad thing at all it's Mm -hmm. not a bad thing Mm -hmm. what you said but definitely like adulthood is trial and error so keep you know, if it doesn't work for you, find something else. Okay, so another big day that many music artists are waiting for is the Grammys, which will air later this month. So while some artists have claimed the Grammys are outdated and meaningless, others are looking forward to taking home the coveted music awards. Regardless of where you stand on that debate, do you feel like awards and accolades are a true indication of your success? That's big because I know for Gen Z and millennials, we love, we love getting recognition. We love, yeah. some people do. I know for me, like if I'm getting an award in front of everybody, I'm like, oh my God, Andrew just got an award. Like, oh, I'm the best. Oh. <laughs> but as I start to mature and get older, I think that sometimes like getting awards and accolades, that's just a piece of paper. That's just mm. something on the wall to me. What means more to me is when somebody calls me, texts me and tells me, hey, Andrew, something you told me like two years ago, like this worked for me or, you know, things Mm. like people, people giving back and telling you, hey, like this is something you told me and I did this. For me, like when I, like I got a text message from Katie and like that made me so happy when I, like we had a conversation on the phone, we were talking about our lives and whatnot. And then you texted me and you told me that you wanted to do like your thing and like your music thing. And I was so proud of you. Like, I am so proud of you. And I- So gonna cry. Keep it. No, like I- I'm I literally gonna cry. 
because like that like that right there like you know, like where I was in that moment like I had been in a dark moment for a long time and I felt like when you sent me that text message of like yo Andrew like you really gave me the push like that made my heart really really warm and for me like I'll continue to be that pusher for people because mm -hmm. I was in higher education and like my students looked up to me like even though sometimes I was like what the hell am I doing I'm here for people and I'm here to push you and I think that that right there that's better than any award or mm -hmm. accolade, anything that I could get. As long as you, you know, I helped you in that way. Like, that's what I'm here on earth for. I feel like I'm here on earth to help people and guide them in whatever way they need to go. So Katie, you're amazing. Key, you're amazing. Eric, you're all amazing. If you need me to push you, I'm here. I'm that, I'm the big pusher. I'm the big bear pusher. So oh, keep being amazing. Keep being amazing. No, I yeah. definitely love that. I, you know, and the thing that I always think about is like, Yes, I'm gonna be real with you. I like my awards and I like my accolades because I know I work hard and I know I put a lot of love and energy into everything I do. At the end of the day, I am because I am, period. I am this person, I am great, I am wonderful, I am beautiful because I am. The best part of getting to this space in my life is needing less and less of the like capacity to please people because I'm a recovering people pleaser. And so I was, you know, I just want harmony. I just want people to like me. I just... And I've gotten to a space where it's like, you're not gonna see the vision and that's gonna be okay. But when it, the, when the vision comes to fruition, I'll come back over here seeing, oh, I did see it, Absolutely. I know what you were talking about. No, 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 because you know, a lot of me not getting all of the awards and stuff that I believe that I deserve is me being covered until I'm thoroughly ready. That's kind of how I see it. And so I am because I am like, and that's just it. And like the two questions I always ask myself, are you in alignment with purpose? Are you happy with the product that you put putting out? Period. And if I'm happy about those two things, if I'm in alignment with purpose, I feel good. And just like y'all were saying earlier, it's truly about how you're impacting people. Like, I really hope group chat is like the thing that impacts somebody. And they like, I remember when Eric said this, and it made me want to go be <laughs> an actor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you said something that changed somebody's life. That's what I'm, you know what I mean? And everything else is just frivolous. And besides, that's racking up junk anyway. Like, we need to minimize how much stuff we bring in the house that's a problem like, you know? true you know, you true it's paper. true piece of paper. like what am i gonna do with this am i gonna give this to my kids you know in the future my grandkids oh my god this was andrew's award like what are you gonna do with my trophies what are you gonna yeah. do with them? I feel like to your note about like, I am what I am or I am. I am because I am. Yes. I am because I am. Yeah, I think that's amazing because I feel like there's such a difference between like an award and an accolade that like signifies an end versus like an opening of more opportunity. So I feel like those are like two different things mm. where it's like, obviously if you win a Grammy, then in other people's eyes, you just have your world opens up to opportunity but the issue and from my mind about like frequent awards and accolades and we're talking like big dogs if we're talking about like, like a grammy emmy oscar whatever is that like very often they're not inclusive like the weekend not being nominated for a grammy or like minari which is like not able to be nominated for like best feature because it's in a foreign language, which is like bullshit and racism. But um, like, I think like that's a big issue when it comes to these awards and accolades that have a lot of tradition behind them because at the end of the day, like they're just propelling people who continue to do the status quo or exactly. to do whatever we believe, whatever, <laughs> whatever the big dogs say. And like, truthfully, what I've been trying to instill more in my life is to just incorporate authenticity and specificity. And then like, if that begets the award, fantastic. And if it doesn't, then like, who, who cares? It's not about getting an Oscar or getting an Emmy, like in my mind or getting whatever, like some title. It's about like, what can that do to like further allow you to attach yourself to your purpose and to do more. And like, for me, I'm getting out of this a lot. Like I, I just graduated from Harvard and I was surrounded by this environment of just like everyone is attached to accolades and awards. But most of them, you see them five to 10 years down the road and it doesn't matter if they got like the prize for their best grades. Like no one really <laughs> cares, no one cares. <laughs> But then like on the other end of it, that also calls for me as an individual, like if I'm ever on the other end to not care about that kind of like high status stuff either. You know, like sometimes it is easy to be like, oh, well this person went here or this person got this. So obviously they must be good. But no, like if I want to live in a world where I don't, I don't need to depend on getting this random thing to be taken seriously, then I too, when I'm on the other end of that, have to like really give people a shot and like really understand, you know, and not care about that as well. So I think it's a big like cyclical thing. Absolutely. Supply and, and, and Eric, now I know for some of us, maybe not Katie, 
But for some of us, even in high school, like with some of those accolades and those people who got accolades and awards, where are those people now? I would like to add on to that because <laughs> <laughs> I went I went to like one of the most like the highest performing academic school on the West Coast or some shit. Some some merit based school, separate application to get in or whatever. I could write a book about that school. But anyways, the point is like my year had the highest like percentage of acceptances into Ivies or whatever. Um, and I felt like really bad about myself because like I didn't get into any of the schools I applied to. Now I like know that, you know, that's not a measure of like, well, I guess this directly applies to whatever we're talking about. That's not a <laughs> like measure of my success and not a measure of my intelligence. Y'all are going to Ivy's. I'm going to the community right now. We're going to end up in like, like we're going to end up in the same place. We're going to end up in whatever field we're pursuing right now. We're going to pay our mortgages. Some of us get married. Some of us have kids or whatever. Like we're all going to get jobs and then Damn. like, yeah, like we're all gonna end up in the same place. So there's no there's no point in like comparing ourselves right now because we're just different. These are just the paths we're going on. And eventually like this won't matter. It'll just be like a point in our lives. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I guess that example correlates to the Grammy thing because it's like who's nominating these people? Like who's determining these people's like talent their success mm -hmm. their whatever like like you said earlier eric like the weekend was robbed and we all know that he's a very 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 talented musician and artist everybody loves him he's super popular and he didn't get nominated because the board of like the people who run the grammys or whatever have a specific like i don't know the you know what i mean yeah like in your framework or like yeah and, and so all of these like award shows are based on the opinions of a select group of like elite people, whatever, that actually don't reflect the views of the public because there are so yeah. many talented artists that don't get recognition, but are passionate about what they do. And I guess my opinion is awards don't, they're not a measure of success and definitely not of capability. You drop the mic on now. What mantra do you say to stay motivated? Don't aspire for perfection. Just do it. Like it's never gonna be perfect. And if you want things to be perfect, you're <laughs> gonna shoot yourself in the foot by not doing uh, it. <laughs> so always settle for good. All right. So what's a piece of advice that changed your life point of view? Wow. I think there's not only one way to educate. As I left the traditional classroom as a public school teacher, thinking that that was my life's dream, my life's goal, and then learning later that I was meant to educate in multiple ways, a multifaceted way. And so now I educate with self-care and mindfulness, which is not something I ever thought I would be doing. So that changed my life for the better. And I'm so thankful for, for people who kept saying that to me, like you were still a teacher. Who so. is your shoulder to lean on? So I have two shoulders. One is physically with me, not now, but like my best friend is definitely like my physical shoulder, my mom. And then my friend, who I was in a relationship with, but we're friends. But like, I have three different shoulders, not two, so I lied. Um, I definitely rely on these people for a lot of like what goes on in my everyday life. I love them. And I know that like, if I need to cry, like we'll cry together. If you need to lean on my shoulder, I got your shoulder, you got mine. Like I got your front, you got my back. Like that's just how it is. Mom, best friend, and then other friend. Yeah. I love you all. <laughs> Earlier this week was also MLK Day, a day to commemorate the service and life of civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. While history holds him as a triumphant figure, it is well documented that he was not always perfect. Do we do a disservice to the legacy of leaders by immortalizing them in history? Which this is a really good question because I'm pretty sure you know that most of our heroes in history have different lives or double lives or lives that we wouldn't expect them to have or we didn't know as a kid because we were just too young to know. So what do y'all think? Like, what do you think about this? It is really important that we be realistic about <laughs> people. There are people just like us. So when we make mistakes, I hope and pray that when I become this amazing person and I'm gone and my legacy is left behind, because I manifested that, okay? I really hope that people don't go and pick apart my life. I really, really hope. But the reality is that these people, these historical figures were people first mm -hmm. and foremost. And yes, we do a disservice when we immortalize their, their their existence and say, oh, they were just so great. Yes, they're great, but also reminders that two things can be true at once. Because I like to be real about who I am. Like in, in the one breath, I am love and light. And in the other breath, I am making a lot of mistakes. 
both of things can be true at once. And I just think it's important for us to make space, hold space for both things to be true. Now, should we still be able to, to critique and hold them accountable <laughs> beyond the grave? I don't know about you can, you can't hold them accountable necessarily, yeah. but you can still critique, yeah. critique their lives. Yeah. Like it's okay to do that because with MLK, he did some amazing things. He's an ancestor of mine. But at the end of the day, he did some things that I am not proud that he did. And right. it's the same thing with many other figures. And so we have to be realistic. And that's kind of how yeah. I, I move through it. But even even with these figures, like, you know, we, we idolize them. And it, it goes back to social media and people there. Like, mm. we, we're now in this world where we're showing every single part of our life, where people have access to every single part of our lives. So it's like, you're never not going to have all parts of you that are like on front street so i guess what i'm trying to say is like i mean i was always raised that like whatever people got going on like that's their business so <laughs> for me it's like what does his personal life have to do with me i mean i could go about my day and be like oh you know he wasn't faithful to his wife yeah that's that's like bad for him but his, <laughs> you know you know his, you. his dream his dream was definitely a dream I wanted to be a part of. Not yeah. his personal life dream, but I mean, how many of these people legit are, are quote unquote, like saints? Because they're not, you know? Like you probably don't even know what your neighbor, like you may know your neighbor, but like you probably don't know what they do after midnight or after one o'clock, you know? <laughs> or, and I don't want to find or maybe, out. No, no, or you know what somebody else does. <laughs> I mean, that's why they have OnlyFans, right? now <laughs> so going back but yeah yeah i guess the truth of matters i really don't know i think i think my answer is no i don't think we do a disservice to the legacy of leaders yeah. by immortalizing them in history but i also think that it's like very you know it's a case-by-case like -case basis like the example that we're giving is Martin Luther King when like the example could also have been like Robert E. Lee you know we're like there are a lot of different people that we commemorate in history where it's like it's it's obviously a scale but like I don't think we can judge them all by like the same basis like some people definitely deserve to be commemorated way more than others even though they're still like in so I think that's very true like there is no perfect person and I'm also pretty convinced that if there was a perfect person they probably wouldn't be a leader or like out be like you know our understanding of like a famous person because they probably were like too busy like doing good in their local communities yeah. and like not caring about like their status on a global scale you know like i just think the concept of legacy is really interesting because like you you both need to like have like having being remembered for doing something good like requires you to be remembered and a lot of people become remembered on a large scale by like not doing great things mm. like we, we popularize terrible terrible things and we like give fame and memory to randos who like don't deserve it and that's like our fault you know that's what we do that <laughs> And so I think that like, it doesn't, it doesn't do a disservice because we should honor people who do net positive things because like, I just think it's not comparable. Like spearheading of a civil rights movement versus like cheating on your partner. I would never ever cheat on my partner, but like, those are like, you cannot, <laughs> like those are so different. And yeah. it, it's not like you can just like collate it and be like, well, like minus two points plus 100 points. Like, <laughs> Yeah. It, to some extent, you do have to pick and choose, I think. But no one is perfect. No one. Yeah. No, uh, no, I agree with all of you. And I think just the fact that, that we're all maintaining that nobody is perfect answers the question that no, it doesn't do a disservice. Because as long as, if we are immortalizing these people, as long as we remember that they're not perfect, I, I, don't, I don't think it's harming their legacy. Like if we still, we acknowledge the fact that, you know, they've made mistakes but okay. we acknowledge their mistakes but you know we can still appreciate all the good that they've done for us obviously mlk did a lot and he did cheat on his wife which again like i i guess i'm just i'm like parroting everything that you guys have said but the mistakes that he's made in his personal life or whatever they may not be you know the most admirable life choices or whatever but you know if if we remember him as a civil rights leader who was also a person we can continue to remember him as a civil rights leader it also depends on what they're like you said what they're well known for, for. like i'm pretty sure if this question was like christopher columbus we would all feel very differently about yeah. like this question you know what i'm saying so I, I think it all depends on like their legacy quote unquote and like what 
exactly that they are quote unquote doing the problem that we have is just like idolizing people and that like that's that's the only way that we can harm people's legacy or like make people like view prominent figures in history as like perfect people and like idolization is a huge part of like our culture now like celebrity Mm -hmm. culture and whatever as always it's so much fun getting to hang with everybody and for everybody watching we want you to join in too so tell us your thoughts in the comments below and remember to like and share today's episode with your group chat Let's keep the conversation going. Plus, don't forget to click the bell and subscribe to Adolescent's YouTube channel so you won't miss out on our next episode or any of the new content dropping soon. Thanks for dropping in to the group chat. Until next time, TTYL.